Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this one is about bash scripting and a little line that I put at the top of almost all of my bash scripts. Uh, someone on stream asked, what, what does that line do? And so I figured I would jump in and show you. So let's, let's do that. Okay, so the line in question, uh, let's actually open up a shell script. Um, so usually, you know, I put a shebang here, user bin and bash. Uh, I did a video on shebang, so I will try and remember to link that in the description. Uh, but the line that we're talking about today is set dash eu xo pipe fail. And I usually put this at the top and I've heard this referred to as bash strict mode. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you what each of these characters does because it's it's a lot in one line. Um, and we're gonna write them all out one line at a time because this is, this is actually kind of a short form of this. Um, and I'll go through what each of them do separately. So let's ignore this for a second and split those all out. So one of them is set dash E, one of them is set dash U, one of them is set dash X, and one of them is set dash O pipe fail. Um, but together they're e EU XO pipe fail. Now set dash X is, is kind of optional. Uh, so I'm gonna put it first and show you what it does and we'll comment these other ones out. So, with set dash x, what set does is it enables particular bash features. So let's do schmod plus x t dot sh to make it executable, and then run this script. Um, so what set dash x does is it turns on verbose mode for bash, and what it'll do is it'll run, it'll it'll print the commands with a little plus uh, before it runs this. And if you run into a function, if I recall correctly, uh, let's do this. Um, Oh, I thought it put two pluses in front of this. Maybe it's subshells? I don't know. <laughs> I thought there was some way where it showed, you know, a depth, but I guess not. Uh, but anyway, it, it shows the command before it's going to run it. Uh, that way it's a little bit easier to debug what's going on in the script. Uh, it also will expand variables. So if you do like x equals hello, and then you did, you know, high dollar x, uh, you'll see that it, you know, it expanded out the variable form of hello before it ran it here. Um, so again, this can be really useful to see what's going on there. Um, also, if you were to run, uh, you know, a sub process in here, you'll see, oh, that's where the dot comes from. Okay, so we have we have a subshell in here. That's where the, the double indent is. So you can see this is run as part of this expansion here. And then, you know, the result of it is expanded into this here. So that's what set dash X does. So it, it enables verbose mode. Um, we don't always need that. So a lot of times you'll turn this off on scripts that you don't want to be noisy, um, but you can always debug them. So like if we if we didn't have set dash X set here, uh, we run this script, it just prints high watt. Uh, but what you can do is you can do bash dash X and it'll run the script with verbose mode. So I often find this is a really useful way to debug a shell script. Okay, that's, so that's X out of the way. Let's talk about E next. So what E does, uh, I don't know what it actually stands for, but the way I think of it, it is error mode, uh, where if a command returns non-zero, the script will exit at that point, also returning non-zero. And so this, this makes it so like if some part of your script fails, it doesn't continue running the rest of the script because you know it's, it's probably invalid at that point. I um, mean, pretty much every scripting language does this by default. So you know, Bash, Bash just like hands you the shotgun pointed at your foot, I guess. Um, but let's say we did, you know, like echo high and then we ran something that failed. So let's, I don't know, we're going to simulate something that fails by doing Bash dash C uh, echo fail uh, to standard error and then exit one as our, you know, failure thing. Uh, and if we don't have set dash E, so let's actually remove this up here. If we don't have set dash E, you'll see that this thing failed, but it just continued running the script as if nothing had happened, even though this exited non-zero. Um, we can actually show the return code by doing this. So you can see it exited one. And so, yeah, we're gonna keep set dash X in here. That way we don't have to keep running it like this. Uh, and we can see what's going on. Um, but yeah, you can see like, even though this returns non-zero, even though this produced an error, the script kept running. Uh, but if you turn on set E, what it'll do is, uh, as soon as something fails, the script will stop running and immediately exit with that error code. So you can see like this exited non-zero, it exited one. Let's actually change this to uh, 15, for example. Uh, oh, I didn't actually run it. Um, and you can see that now the script will exit with this return code. So if it encounters an error, it will exit here. Now you can still run scripts that will exit non-zero, um, but you can, 
uh, how do you do this? Um, oh, you run the script and then you say, or you can say ret c equals zero, uh, or ret c equals dollar question mark. And then you could say like, if, you know, uh, if ret c equals 15, echo it exited 15. <laughs> Just a silly example. Uh, something like that. So you could still run a script now. Uh, oh, I know how to write bash. <laughs> you can still run a script that has things that exit non-zero, um, but you'll want to capture the return code using or. Uh, that way this entire statement returns to zero, and so it doesn't prematurely exit. Okay, so that's set-u and set-x. Let's do the next one, which is set-u. Uh, what set-u does, and again, we'll delete all this code here. What set-u does is it makes it an error to print out variables that don't exist. So if I were to do echo $x without set-u, so let's comment out set-u, um, and we did hello $x hello, for instance, you'll see if we run this script that it just expands unknown variables to an empty string. Now, often typos in variable names should be, you know, name errors in reasonable scripting languages, but again, bash is not a reasonable scripting language. Uh, and so <laughs> if you have undefined variables, it will just happily say, oh yeah, empty string, here you go. And if you turn on set dash u, that now causes this unknown variable to be an error and the script will exit. So you can see it'll say, you know, unbound error. It'll even tell you the line number it's on. Uh, and it's, it's really helpful for, you know, debugging here, but it's also better for writing, you know, safe scripts. Now, occasionally you do need to test whether a variable actually exists and so, um, and, and provide default values in other cases. So what you can do for that is you can use some special bash expansions. So if we do dash z, dash z is test if it is a empty string. Um, and if we just did dollar x here, like this is, you know, maybe, maybe a way that you would do this before. Uh, echo x is empty, but you'll see that this actually this actually errors again for the same reason because uh, x is an undefined variable and we're trying to access it here. Uh, but we can use a substitution. I believe this one expands to uh, the thing after the dash if it's empty or missing. Oh, of course we still have this down here, uh, and so this can allow you to you know test whether something is empty or undefined. Um, and, you know, in that case, we can say, like, echo setting x to default, and then x equals some defaults or whatever. And then we come down to here, and, and this, this now works again. Uh, so that might be some scripting that you would do for undefined variables. So that's what set dash u is. Uh, and that brings us to our last one, which is dash o pipe fail. And what pipe fail means, um, let me show you an example where a script would fail but continue to run. Again, this is this is to make bash more safe to write. Uh, let's say we had, and this is just gonna be a bogus pipeline. So let's say we did hello, and we piped that into, I don't know, some command uh, that maybe it didn't like its input, and so it exited with a failure. Uh, echo fail to st uh, standard out, and then it exited non-zero. And maybe that piped to something else. So maybe it pipes to cat or you know, echo at, for, for instance. <laughs> Uh, interestingly, bash will not consider this inner failure by default. So you'll see if we run this, it failed and it did exit non-zero in here, uh, but the script kept running, which is not a desirable behavior. Uh, if something in a pipeline fails, you would hope that the whole pipeline would just fail instead of just silently gobbling this error. And so that's what the pipe fail option does. If we do set dash o pipe fail, uh, this will now cause the entire pipeline to return zero at the end. So you can see uh, it still runs the pipeline. So even though this inner part fails, it's still going to run this next part here, but at least the rest of the script won't continue. So the script will stop execution here. And so that's all of those options. And uh, I should put this up here and, you know, putting them all together, you get EU XO pipe file uh, and the order of these doesn't matter. I just happen to always use that same order. Uh, I guess the order for the last one does matter because it's a multiple argument. So the O option has to be at the end. Uh, I think let's actually remove it and validate that <laughs> before I just you know spout nonsense that I, I think is correct. Oh, I guess they can be in any order. 
<laughs> weird. But that's just weird. Uh, but anyway, that's EUL Pipe Fail. Hopefully this was useful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.